All right, hey traders, TG Watkins here. It is December 15th when I'm recording this, and I wanted to get to actually take a step back today and not talk about anything too specific, but I wanted to look at the higher time frames, monthly, weekly, daily, on a few things, and I wanted to look around at, I got a whole list here of mostly uh, in ETFs, uh, section sectional type ETFs, sector type ETFs, and then some individual stocks that kind of show that maybe this market is coming to an end as far as the bearish side. So stick with me here. I, I want to talk about a few things. And I know that there are two very opposing narratives out there. Let me first discuss the narr narratives very briefly. So there's kind of like, do we believe the Fed or we do not believe the Fed? Those, I think, are the two camps that everyone is leaving, uh, living in. If we believe the Fed, the Fed is saying we're going to hold rates higher for longer we're going to fight inflation until the bitter end. We're going to get inflation back down to 2%. And we nothing will stop us. Nothing will get in our way until we have that objective obtained. So if we believe the Fed, that means that we're, we, we kind of need to crash the economy. We need to send our economy into a recession. Um, we need to have a, a hard landing, not a soft landing. We need to have deflationary forces exist in order to bring inflation back down. And we're gonna have to crack a few eggs in order to make this happen. Like it's it's gonna be painful. The good side of that means that we're gonna we're gonna get through this really difficult spot very quickly, and we're gonna rip the band-aid off and we're gonna just do it hard and fast, and we're gonna get it done right the first time, and we're just gonna knock this thing out and we're gonna kill inflation. That's if we that that's if the Fed holds true for everything that it's saying and we believe them and, and all that kind of stuff and they're going to go that direction. The other side of it is, do we not believe the Fed? And that would be more like we're following the market because I look through some of the stocks here and I'm going to show you, and the market is kind of saying, hey, we've already repriced everything. We we know there's a recession coming. We know that's going to happen. We now know what the Fed is going to do. We're raising interest rates. We got that. But yes, we're going to be slowing the rate of interest rate hikes. We also know the target rate that they're going to be trying to get to. And we've kind of already factored all this stuff in. In fact, we're really good about doing this. We already know what's going to happen six months or eight months or 10 months or 12 months out. And we've kind of already repriced everything. In fact, we've taken most of the froth out of the system already. Most all those stocks that were super crazy and like whatever, <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> Pinterest and all that stuff, Carvana, everything that was too crazy back in 2020, we have already killed it. It's done. And we've repriced everything. And we we have come down and we have already figured out what we're, where we're going to be at. And you look at the TNX, the TNX, which is basically bonds and interest rates and all that kind of stuff. And it said, OK, we've already come down and they keep coming down, despite what the Fed says about raising interest rates. And what about the dollar? We look at the dollar, the dollar keeps coming down. Now, maybe there are bounces that might happen in all of these things. I could see that. We could bounce up into resistance and then go lower. So a temporary bounce. And so if we if the if we don't believe the the Fed, because the market is saying, hey, we understand you're talking tough like this. And what happens if we basically say, you know, Fed, we know you're talking tough and we think you're going to be, you know, going up to this amount of interest rate. You're going to keep going. You're going to get inflation down, all that kind of stuff. But we think enough damage has already happened to the economy. In fact, you know, we're, we're seeing the, you know, ISM, the Philly Fed, uh, all these other things, all this stuff is saying, actually, the economy is contracting much more quickly than we ever thought. And it's doing it at a very, very rapid pace. And so, all this bad economic news that we're seeing, you know, recession news could actually be good because remember, bad news could be good news for the market because the, the more bad news we get about the economy, the, the sooner the Fed might be to saying, hey, we've achieved our goal of getting this economy down, getting inflation down and stifling stuff. And so now we can actually, you know, ease up a little bit sooner than we think. And the market, what if the market actually is sniffing this out sooner than the Fed is. Because remember, the market started raising interest rates before the Fed did. Like the market already started pricing this in. In fact, the market started to take down all of those really crazy high flying names, basically February 15th. That's that's when I started seeing all those crazy high flyers just just hit the top and start to roll down. So the so the first peak of the market was February 15th, uh, what was it 2021? 
And then after that, everything else started to go. And then, you know, December and January was when everything else started to really roll over. And so these, I think, are the two narratives that we have out there. Which one's right? I don't think we know. And I think that is really the whole debate out there of, on one side, hey, why are you trying to fight the Fed? And don't you know that they're going to, what have they said? What have they said? They're going to be tough. They're going to take this down. They, like, don't be bullish, all this kind of stuff. But on the other side, the, the, the market's like, yeah, we know. We, we know all that. We got that. And yeah, recession? Yeah, we already kind of planned that in. Like, we get it. We get there's Sure, we're fine. We've planned all that in. We factored all that. Which one's true? I don't exactly know. But what I wanted to do is go through some of this stuff. And for an eye to say, hey, it, are we at 2008? Are we in a middle ground of 2002? You know, 2000 to 2002 when the market kind of went sideways for a while and then did roll down later. Maybe we're in this, this point where monetary conditions are actually getting easier. And so we get a little bit of a neutral, neutral movements with the, the, the market. Let me show you real quickly. If we look at 2000, and this is something I've been kind of talking about with my subscribers. What if we're right here? What if we are actually for the next few months, we're in a place where, yes, we ran into the 200. We pull down to the 50. We bounce. So we go bullish, but we run into the 200 again. And then we move down. So the, bull, the bears are winning, but we don't crash. We, in fact, we find some support and then we move up again and the, and the bulls are correct. But then we kind of run into some resistance and we start to fail and the bulls are correct for a while, but oh man, there's, there's another little bounce. It kind of throws them off their trail. But then boom, there is the big move. There's the big move. You know, that's the, that's the 2008, that's the waterfall move. That's the crash everybody's looking for. What if that happens? And that might be true. So maybe, maybe the bears do win. But what happens if we have to go through all of this sideways movement for months? Months. I mean, what is that? Six months that the market actually goes sideways? So what if that's true too? So what if both the bulls and the bears both win, but they do so in such a choppy sideways fashion that we actually go sideways for a few months? Then maybe this happens because of the push-pull of, well, we are slowing down the rate of interest rate hikes. And, you know, the economy's kind of dealing with it and we're planning with that. And maybe we've already repriced priced a lot of stuff in the market. So there are a lot of individual names that can start going bullish because, you know, a lot of names can actually view this as neutral and they can go up while the market's neutral. That might be a thing. But then maybe some black swan comes out out there and because of the interest rate hikes and all that kind of stuff and whatever, we actually do get a swan dive. You know, the market actually really does roll over and go down. And so the bears are eventually correct. But to figure out that we're actually going to swoon and really roll over when, you know, there were a couple fake, fake moves in between, you know, it's going to be really hard to tell. So I'm just kind of putting it out there as an example of 2002 where it might be tough to figure that out exactly when that's going to happen. So let me just demonstrate a couple things out here. Let's walk through here. I'll show you a few things and say, what, if we look at these charts, what is the likelihood that price is really just going to fall apart? Or... What is the higher likelihood that so many people are already bearish because the put call ratio is so high that what if the bears kind of get disappointed and if we don't go lower, there are, there's a lot of kindling out there. So a lot of, a lot of fuel to light that fire, that short covering fire, that if we can't go lower and we actually start going higher and we light off that, that fuel that is the short squeeze, what if that happens? So I look at the SPY. And I see something like this, that we're right here at the, the, daily, the monthly 50, and we're at the weekly 200. And you know what? We're at a pretty good situation here where if this wanted to go higher, it could. Now, let me just also bring this over here to the daily chart and, and kind of talk about this a little further because here's another situation. You guys know me. I talk about the 50, 250 maneuver. And every time that the that price has come down to the 50, it's failed, right? Here's the 50, big move down, sure. Here's the 50, big move down. And what are we doing now? We're coming into the 50. And that's going to be a big question. Do we come to the 50, maybe bounce around a little bit, but do we fail? And that's, that's kind of the thing that we need to be looking for. And if we do, where do we go? And what if we actually kind of come down to this level and then we start moving back up there? I'm seeing indication out there that there are a lot of ETFs and stocks and tickers out there that on this next move down, they may not want to go too much further to the downside. And I'm seeing that there is divergence. 
starting to, well, let me draw that better. There you go. Draw it coming into the market. We're starting to see some positive divergences coming into the market. Now that's not to say that this move right here is not a short. It was. If you guys look here on the hourly chart for the S&P, that was an inverse trampoline move. Price should not be over the 50 if the MOXIE indicator is below zero. That's exactly what we had right there. That is, that is a go short situation or at least a don't be long situation right there. Okay, so that's for the SPY. Let me just kind of walk through a few things. Let's look at the semis, SOXX. So look at this, we've also come down to the monthly 50. Now, I understand that, you know, the, and I've talked about this before, the monthly 10 tends to be a point of resistance. If price continues to get rejected by the monthly 10, then yes, we'll continue to go lower. But we need to be prepared that what if it comes down here and actually goes higher? Part of my reason for saying that is that there is a bit of a trend line situation going here. If you look at this, here is a trend line, or at least a channel. And notice that price has been in between this channel this entire time, and now what is it doing? It's getting outside of that channel. It's broken out from the downtrend. And if it can maintain that, if it stays outside of that, then this could be bullish. Now let me show you SOXX on here, on the daily chart. So again, we're up here at the 200. Yes, it's resistance. You can see same inverse trampoline move right there, right there. And I do expect price on the SOXX to come down to the daily 50, probably a little bit further. But notice what's happening. As price has been going down, notice how the MOXIE indicator has been going higher. There might be a situation here where if price comes down to or below the daily 50, we might actually be in a potential trampoline move. That would be bullish. So. Just be careful that if we come down here, we need to be aware that this might actually find support and maybe go higher. Now we need to confirm that. We need to see how that happens. We'll be following the hourly chart for, for a better example of that, but just something I wanted to point out there. How about XLF? Now I look at XLF, and if you look at the history on the monthly chart, what happens? Basically, when price gets over the monthly 10, it goes higher. If it can get over the monthly 10 and stay over the monthly 10, even back here, it's bullish. And what are we trying to do? It looks to me like it's trying to get over the monthly 10. Now, I can't prove anything yet. It's still too early. But if it can get over and stay over and use the monthly 10 as support, then it wants to go higher. And if we look at this, what are we seeing on XLF weekly chart? There's a double bottom. Now, remember, a double bottom only works when it works. Otherwise, it's a resting place until price goes lower. But this looks like it's working. This looks like that double bottom worked, and now we have price all the way up here. We should also notice that the eight is over the 21. The eight EMA is over the 21 EMA on the weekly chart. And yes, it's pulling back, sure. But what if that pullback actually comes back into support and starts to go higher? And what if price gets back over the weekly 50? If the XLF gets over the weekly 50, that should, that should be bullish. How about the daily chart? Let me show you XLF. So you can see here, what do we have? Basically a double bottom, positive divergence. And now what that has done is a 50, 200, 50 maneuver. And this is what I've been calling. I've been looking for XLF to come back down to the daily 50 because that's what I look for. I look for price to get over a moving average and then to come back down to a moving average and test it for support. Now I knew it was gonna go a little bit further down because why? The other day, a couple days ago, I guess yesterday, the, the price was over the hourly 50, but the MOXIE indicator was below zero. That's an inverse trampoline move. Price should not be over the 50 if the MOXIE indicator is below zero. So I figured that there was still going to be more pullback to come. And that's true. But what if, you know, maybe, maybe, I can't call this yet, but maybe, what if there's some divergence starting to show up on the hourly chart? What if price keeps going lower, the MOXIE indicator keeps going higher, and price below the 50 while the MOXIE indicator is above zero is a trampoline move? So I'm seeing an indication that something like that might be happening as well. Now, uh, how about floor and decor? Now I know under, I understand the economy. It's cheaper to say remodel your house as opposed to buy a new house, or you go buy some fixer upper stuff, or you go do your do your home your work by yourself at your home uh, as opposed to you know hiring a contractor. So floor and decor makes sense. Okay, so there are still some bullish stocks out there. So here's price basically at the weekly 50 or the monthly 50, and it's starting to get past the monthly 10. And look, there's volume. There's volume that's happening here. Look at the volume that's coming in here on a double bottom. 
And if this thing can get past its weekly 50, that seems to me like there should be some support here. So, so Florin Decor, what does this look like on the daily chart? Well, the interesting thing I'm noticing, there's your double bottom, there's your positive divergence. And what do we have here? 50, 200, 50 maneuver. So it seems to me price is holding the daily 50 and the MOX indicators above zero. There's your double bottom, there's your positive divergence. And this looks like it's starting to follow the hourly 50 with the MOX indicator above zero. So Florin Decor looks like it's pretty good. So there are some bullish things out there. Okay, what about um, CZR, Caesars? You know, this is uh, gambling. Okay. The other thing I want you to know is look at the volume. So in 2020, we understand, you know, the government was throwing a lot of money at the economy and slash the stock market. And all that volume came in on a dip. Well, I'm also starting to notice that there is a little bit more volume coming in on this dip. So what if this is volume coming in to buy the dip? Think about that. And what are we seeing here? Kind of like XLF, isn't it? There's basically a double bottom, you know, leg, heel, arch of the foot, ball of the foot, elf toe. And what do we have? We now have the eight over the 21. Of course, this doesn't have to work. Of course, price can bounce up into resistance and continue to move down and go lower. Of course, that's possible. However, we need to be open-minded that what if this is essentially a double bottom and now you have the eight over the 21 and if price decides to hold somewhere here and move up and get over the weekly 50 and get over the monthly 10, maybe it goes bullish. Let's see what that looks like on the daily chart. A lot like the semiconductors. Look at this. Here's price below the 50, the MOX indicator above zero. That's a trampoline move. And we can also say 50, 200, 50 maneuver. So yes, perfectly reasonable, perfectly understandable that Caesars is running into the 200 and likely to pull back to the daily 50. And that makes sense on the hourly chart. Look, we had price twice over the hourly 50 with the MOX indicator below zero. Yes, it's going to go down. Yes, it's going to pull back. That is the whole point of a 50 250 maneuver is we're going to see price pull back. So I'm not saying buy this stuff right now. I'm not saying I'm bullish right now. But what I'm saying is we need to watch out for and think about what if this pullback on everything that I'm talking about today, what if the pullback that we are experiencing right now in the market actually comes into strength and starts finding some strength and that pullback starts to hold and then eventually move up. I think we need to be aware of what that might mean and the ramifications that it could have for the market. Uh, let me ask some other things. Why is Build-A-Bear up? Build-A-Bear, making new highs. Retail, consumer, consumer discretionary. You know, we're supposed to be going into a recession. Why is Build-A-Bear up? If you guys can help me answer this, I'd love to know. Dick Sporting Goods, not down. In fact, higher. <laughs> like. You know, it made sense why it was up for COVID because, you know, people couldn't really go out and do things. So they were buying, buying sporting equipment and doing the you know family stuff. But why is it still up? Maybe inflation. Maybe it's cheaper to go buy a basketball and play in your backyard than to go out to a batting cage or do something else. Maybe. Um, DXLG. You know, <laughs> XL, like big and tall. Why is this thing still up? Why is this thing still up? How about uh, Decker's? Why is this up? It's at, it's at all, it's at its previous high. Now, is it a double bottom? Maybe, maybe we see a price go lower. It's double bottom or double top, but it's still up when the rest of the market's down. Sig, Signet Jeweler hasn't imploded. Jewelry store, aren't we supposed to be in a recession? Why is this thing up? Why is this thing not down at $20? Why is it still high? I don't, I don't know these things, but I think it's something to be aware of. Now we could also look at solar. Now, this is interesting, you know, energy, green, you know, all that kind of stuff. You know, solar could be the wave of the future. Note that solar is still holding up. Note that solar is now back over its monthly 10 and is also back over the weekly 50 with the 8 over the 21. There might be something here. So solar, we know that several solar names are strong, and I think some other ones are starting to pick up. Now, how about we go over to some other things? Let me just show you HIBL. Now, I understand that these are leveraged ETFs. Most firms or institutions or head funds probably are not buying this kind of stuff. I don't necessarily know who. Is it all retail traders? Is it us? Or maybe it's like some pop, mom and pop type financial shops. You know, maybe 
they have $100 million that they manage. And maybe they buy something like this. Maybe they're okay with it because they don't really have to be uh, totally, um, you know, buy the books and all that kind of stuff. Maybe they're small enough that these kind of things are just fine. And so what I want to know, and I'm looking at these things, let me just kind of zoom in, there you go, is if you notice, where did all the volume come in here? At the low. And notice that a lot of volume is starting to come back into these things on the low. And also, what are we seeing? We're basically seeing an undercut. What is this? An inverse head and shoulders? You know, that's one way to look at it. Um, you know, maybe there's a level here. And what if this pullback starts to hold and we start going up? I understand that the volume on this is small. Maybe it's all retail traders. I don't know. But I think it's something to kind of look into. You know, look at this. We have price pulling back into the daily 50. Now, of course, the last two times that price pulled back into daily 50, it did not hold. And it might not hold this time either. But what if it does? We need to be aware that if these pullbacks actually start coming into some strength, we need to not be surprised if they start moving up. So that's one, ICLN. Now again, I know these are oddball. I know these are oddball uh, ETFs, but it is something very interesting to note. Look at the amount of volume that is coming into this. Now I understand there was a lot of volume at the top. That's fine too. There can be a lot of distribution. But look at the amount of volume that is coming into something like this. And notice that something like this is not going down. It's kind of like the solar ETF. They're not going down. The market is down huge. These are not down. And in fact, you can see there's kind of like a double, triple bottom as price comes into the weekly 200 and the monthly 50. And a lot of volume. So there might be something here. Why, is, why are they not going down? Uh, XBI, biotech. Look at the amount of volume coming in here as it reached its low and it looks like an inverse head and shoulders. There is a lot of volume coming in this. Why is biotech doing well? Why? And you can also see there was a lot of volume here and that was the last low. You can see there's a little pickup of volume here too, a little pickup of volume here too. Okay, so there's a lot of volume coming into XBI. And notice it's back over its monthly 10. It's back over its monthly 10. Um, DPST. Now, I did want to show you guys contrary. So DPST, uh, banking, a lot of volume came into here 2020, and that was low, and it bounced up. Notice there's not a lot of volume, and it still looks good, like it's going down. Okay, so here is a situation where it is not being supported by volume, and it does look like it's going to keep going down. So I did, I did want to show you that there are examples of this. How about uh, XHB? Home builders, you know, and uh, look at this. Here's a low, 2008, 2009. Look at all that volume, and here's again. Look at all that volume. Where did price go? And here, more volume. There was a dip, and look at this. More volume, and here we are at the monthly 50. Notice that the weekly chart double bottom, double bottom. Remember, a double bottom only works when it works. Otherwise, it's a resting place until price goes lower. So as long as price continues to hold this double bottom. It looks like it wants to go higher and look at the volume that has come in on that double bottom. Seems like it might be buying. SOXL, an interesting one to look at. I can kind of you know, show you guys here. Look at all the volume that came in here. That was a level and look what it did after that. How about the volume here? There you go. And look what it did there, higher. Uh, let me show you this. How about this? A lot of volume coming to this at the low. Starting to recover. What's up with all this volume? How about this volume? Low, low. Okay, might be something interesting. Uh, WANT, more retail kind of stuff. But look at the volume. Look at the volume that's starting to come in here at kind of this low. Now, of course, you know, what if the market really does fall apart? What if these things really do go lower? And again, I know that these are maybe oddball ETFs and you know not a whole lot of volume, all that kind of stuff. But if we do notice, what do we have? Price down, MOX indicator up. I know these are not ready to buy yet. They haven't turned yet. But what I'm seeing is that they're not going down as much. They're starting to slow the, their descent. And there's a lot of volume coming into it. So what if these things are starting to kind of get bought up by larger firms and institutions? Maybe because they're at good, good areas. Uh, retail, RETL. Again, I know, oddball, oddball. But look at this. Notice here, where was the volume? At the low, and it went higher. 
where was the volume on a dip? It went higher. Okay, it rolled over. And then you hit more volume and more volume. Okay. And it just, it's crazy even to look at this. Look at the sustained amount of volume that's actually in this in general. I don't know. Maybe it came alive. Maybe more people don't know, know about it. Maybe there are more retail traders out there that are happening. But if we look at this on a daily chart, you know, the, one of the things that I'm kind of noticing in through here, and again, I know, I understand it's going down. I understand it's going down now. This is a larger time frame thing. I'm talking about macro stuff. I'm trying to talk about stuff that might be shaping up in the few weeks or months. Not right now, but something that might be happening. Notice the Moxie indicator up. Notice price down and starting to go level. There might be something here. There might be something building. Okay. So that's RETL. Um, XRT. And another interesting one, if we look at this in the, in the volume, uh, look at this. Volume right here, there's a low. Now more volume here, continue to go up. There's a volume, low. Um, there we go, it's little volume right there. That was the low. And, uh, yeah, oh, sorry, so that's CRT. Well, that's not what I'm working. XRT. I was like, that's not working. There you go. Much, much better. There you go. That's what I was trying to look at. Look at, look at all that volume right there at the low, and then price went higher. And not much that we can see, but there's a little bump, a little bump of volume that's coming here. And look at the double bottom. And it's also here at the monthly 50 SMA. So either these things look like they want to actually hold the monthly 50 SMA, or this is a resting place until price goes lower. Like if the market's really going to roll over, then sure, they'll fall off the monthly 50 SMAs. And that is something we need to be prepared for. Um, WBL. I just find this very interesting. Because if we look at this, why is there so much volume suddenly coming into a name like this all the way at the bottom? Like after this thing has had such a, it, look how low. So even from its inception, look how low it is and look where the volume is coming in. Do people know something we don't know? Is this a good deal? Is this a good value? Is there something crazy happening? How about, um, let me just do one more, C-L-O-U. Yeah. How much further do these things go? Maybe the market has really already repriced this. So look at this. Back when it opened, look at where it is. Same place. Maybe these things are actually starting to slow their descent, and they could be building bases to maybe go higher. If I'm wrong about this, do we think these things are really going to crash and burn even further? I mean, they have already been repriced. They've already come back down to where they are or even lower than where they are. You know, and if this market falls apart, if the S&P goes lower, sure, are these going to go much lower? Maybe, maybe. But what if, don't, th don't they look like they're starting to slow their descent? And I just look at these things and I think, the damage is already done. And so, I don't know. There's not a whole lot to act on right now, of course, because the market's pulling back. But it's something on a much larger, bigger time frame to kind of start paying attention to. Let me see if um, CLOU on the daily chart. Yeah, look at that. Here we go. What do we have? Price down, Moxie indicator up. Mm, price down a little bit, you know, close to a double bottom. Notice how the Moxie indicator is still above zero. It's a potential trampoline move. So even the Moxie indicator is starting to show a lot of positive divergence coming into things like this. Maybe something to note. So as I said, not a day for a whole lot of action, but a lot of stuff out there that we should pay attention to and see if there's something building underneath the surface and keep our head on a swivel. And that uh, if the market does go bullish, let's not be surprised. All right, everyone. Thanks for your time. See you at the next one. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.